Hello, this is Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags, and you're listening to the Fire Catchers Chat. We have a very special guest today. We're talking with Angel Purdy, and we're going to be talking about how worship has affected her and changed her and kind of what she's, she's, there's some really exciting things that she's going to talk to us about. So welcome, Angel. Hi, how are you doing? It is so, you are so so beautiful. I, I love what we've been seeing on online. Um, I'm going to ask you why you're wearing so much teal, but you'll notice we color coordinated. Yes, even with my house. <laughs> we color coordinated. I wear this t-shirt. You can't even see it. It's the uh, uh, dance, worship flag dance shirt that Angel designed and it is one of my favorite t-shirts a it's the color that i love too but i love these t-shirts so okay so let's start chatting with you what um what does worship mean to you um worship is worship is who i am um i can't i can't i can't see, out, see my life or see myself outside of worship uh, because it's been a part of who i am for so long it's been a part of my growth as a child of God, as a, as a mother, as a wife, um, as a leader. Um, I can't not see myself apart from worship. That's amazing. That it, I, I love that you, I love that you said that because you cannot, worship is more than an, an act. It is more than singing a song. It's more than clapping your hands. It's part of you. You can't, you can't, you can't get away from worship. Like you can't get away from breathing, from breathing, from breathing. Yeah, yeah. How long? Ha so, do you? Can you tell us a little bit about your? Now you're a dance minister. You're, you're a dance leader for your church. Can you tell us about your dance ministry? And you've actually just started using worship flags like recently in yes. the last couple of years. Can you tell us about uh, how? It, how worship flags has actually changed the dance ministry that you've been leading? Yes, um, I've been been a, been in the dance ministry now since about 2005. I remember my first time ever ministering in dance. I was solo, and it was just something that I felt a tug to do. It was after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, and Hurricane Rita, which um, I, my city was affected by Rita, and I lost my home and lost everything um, in that. And so, um, in that, I just had a a tug to, to just to just worship and to just bring before him um just all of me and in that shortly after there in 2006 i began to assist and help with my dance ministry i attend christian baptist church here in lake charles louisiana and um from there it just over the next couple of years the lord just began to open doors i then went from assisting to leading and then i was leading the children's ministry and currently i lead um five ministries um, they're different ages and we have everything from young men to young women, uh, adult, young adults and on down to like our five year old little girls. And it's just been such a blessing and so amazing. But we were just had we just had rehearsal yesterday and we were just discussing how over the last couple of years our worship has changed so much and it started with flags. Uh, we have always had flags we had like little small square probably what you would consider a children's flag and we used them from time to time but we didn't really have the information or the knowledge behind why we were using them we didn't have the information or the knowledge behind why we were using them and uh what exactly they were used for we just knew that they looked nice and they they added a different element but um there was a song that we were getting ready to do called bigger by Jake Lynn Carr and that song I just saw a vision of making God as big as I could possibly make him and um, only thing I could do that with was some big flags and so I began to search them out and I found catch the fire worship flags and we we ordered and from there um, that was 2016 and like now I didn't know what to do with them. They were so big when I got them and I was just telling my ladies like I don't know what we're gonna do but I'm gonna learn how to use these and it wasn't even something I had to learn to do. Holy Spirit just began to, to teach me and to show me and to guide me. And before you knew it, it was kind of like they were a part of me, just like worship was. That's, that's amazing. So now I want to also just make, interject and say, you invited me to your church last year in 2018. 
for a conference that you had put on. And I usually bring wor worship flags for, for workshops that I'm teaching at. And because of the distance, I wasn't able to take them on the airplane. And Angel, when you say that you've gotten worship flags for your team, you have almost as many as I have. I didn't need worship flags. And it your team is so astute with them with the dance it's so beautiful it is so, you're you have such an you've developed the team so well um because you can tell that it comes from a, such a deep place from you uh, as the leader you how you go to such a deep place and so can you tell us where can you tell us um where that deep place like if you want to start to talk about what survivor is and and tell us that place Yes, so um, in 2017, um, January, it's actually about two years from the day, uh, the 11th was two years from the day that I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. Um, it wasn't something that I was ever expecting, ever thought about, could happen to me, it wasn't even something that was on my radar, and then it hit me like a, like a, like a wrecking ball, it just hit me so hard. And um, of course, I, you know, I had to get myself together go through treatment, do what I had to do for myself, for my family, for my children, my husband. And then um, once I came back from treatment, it was such a um, disheartening thing to, as I began to share my story, because I didn't talk to many people about it in the process, because I wanted to make sure that I stayed positive and, and, and just had a tunnel vision. And I didn't want anything to get me distracted or off focus of what I was going to do. And that was going to live through this. And so, um, when I came back and I began to talk to women about it, it was so many women who had had so many battles with um, cervical cancer or precancerous cells, and they just didn't talk about it. And so I, with that and them not talking about it, I didn't know that this was even really that big of a deal or that many women were affected by it. And so I, I really looked out to look to see if I could have a support group or something in the area. And everything I found was for breast cancer or other type of cancers, but they weren't any for, um, let's say a cancer that was unseen, right? And so um, I started looking, started looking, I just had it on my heart and then the Lord led me to Survivor. Um, Survivor is a nonprofit organization that um, brings awareness to people about cervical cancer. It's also a safe haven for women who've had cervical cancer and not just cervical cancer, but if you've dealt with any battles with pre-cancerous cells or any type of issues with um, that, that relate from HPV, which is what uh, causes most cervical cancers. Um, and so basically they bring awareness, they raise funds to um, help people um, in their battles with cervical cancer and they're just I mean it was kind of like finding a, a, my tribe I have a couple I have a couple tribes but it was definitely finding my tribe in in this situation that I had just came through and I don't think anyone can relate um, except for another uh, survivor yeah right if that's that's the beauty of, of groups in yes can you explain now we are talking, if I can, I'm going to, I'm going to cut in the YouTube video. If not, there's going to be a link for a YouTube video that survivors put together. Can you, can you explain what people are going to be seeing in this powerful story? I told you before we started that it, I get chills. The first time I saw it, I actually teared. Um, tell, tell us what this video is and why should they be watching it? Oh my goodness. Um, so through Survivor, um, I knew that I, I needed to get amongst other women who had experienced the same thing I experienced and be able to talk and to just share. And um, so Survivor offered Survivor School. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to Survivor School. I want to go. So I, I applied. I got accepted. And um, maybe about three or four days before I was actually due to leave, the founder, Tamika Felder, she um, inboxed me on Facebook and she had been following my Facebook page and on my Facebook, you know, a lot of people know that I'm a worshiper. They know that that's what I do. They know that I dance. They know that, you know, that I'm sold out. I'm, I'm a king's kid. And so uh, she had inboxed me and I, I have a, a business that I started um, last year on the anniversary of my diagnosis called move that was basically a, a business slash ministry that would allow me to teach worship arts outside of my local church so I could teach it to the community so she had been seeing me do that and so she asked me could I bring 
um, some type of streamers in our ribbon color or some type of dance attire. Uh, she had a vision for a documentary that she was doing and she wanted to see me dancing on the beach. But it was funny though, because I had already ordered, I had already talked to you, Andrea, about ordering the Knowledge of the Glory flags, travel flags that came out because I already had a vision of myself just ministering on the beach and dancing on the beach and not for anything, just because that's where that God has mandated me now to, to go forth and worship and take territory wherever I go. So we were going to, I was going to be in a brand new place in Cape Cod. I had never been there. I was going to be on the, um, the East coast on the Atlantic ocean. I was going to take that opportunity to worship and I wanted to worship with the flags of the knowledge of the glory because they were very similar to our colors. So when she asked me that, I was like, well, you know what? I actually already see myself on the beach dancing at sun up or sundown. And I've already ordered some flags to take with me. So yeah, sure. I'll just throw in some garments and I'll take them with me. And um, I really didn't know what to expect. And I just, you know, this is something that was new for me to like go out and to just dance just for this video, but it really wasn't just for the video. And I didn't, really realized what I was walking into at that moment. But when I went to, um, when I went to survivor school, there were so many people who didn't even know what liturgical dance were. They didn't know what a worship flag was. They didn't know what it was to move in worship. Like I move in worship. And so that was something that I was able to bring to hundreds of people who had never experienced it before. And so I found myself on the beach at the evening at probably about sunset when everybody else was in the um, hotel's uh, restaurant that had windows that looked out to the beach to where I was dancing. And all these people at dinner got to experience worship like they had never experienced it before. And so that was just, I, I just thought, I was like, God, like you, like you're amazing. You, this was a setup. This was a setup and I didn't know it, but now I know it now. I, time and again, you're not, it, this, that's not the very first, um, setup that he's made for you won't be the last. Uh, fire catchers all around, flaggers, worshipers. I mean, the Lord is really bringing to forefront the powerful aspect of, of worship in general, but adding in the whole worship, the creative arts and adding to it. And it just, it makes your, your story so much more powerful. So if we, uh, we're definitely going to be linking to that YouTube. If you haven't seen it, it's, we've had it all over our, in my emails that I've been sending out to the fire catchers. We put it in our blog. Uh, it is just so powerful. Now, you talked a little bit about our colors. Now, tell me, why is your hair teal? Why are you wearing turquoise? Now, normally, you actually have blue lipstick, but today you're not wearing the blue lipsticks. Can you tell us why you're doing that and how, and what, how we could get involved with what you're doing? Yeah, so January is CCAM, uh, which stands for Cerebral Cancer Awareness Month. And all month long, we're bringing awareness to um, people everywhere about cervical cancer, about the effects of HPV. HPV does not just affect uh, women and does not just um, produce cervical cancer, but it can produce cancers in men as well. Um, so we're just trying to make awareness, make everybody aware of uh, HPV. There is a vaccine that can be taken to, uh, and given to our children as young as 11 years old to be able to prevent this in the future for them. And it covers certain strains. There are multiple strains of HPV, um, but there are certain strains that cause cervical cancer. And um, there's two that are very common that are high risk that cause uh, cervical cancer. And so with that, um, I want to make sure that everybody knows and so what we do um, with survivor is we do teal and white Tuesdays so today is Tuesday and I'm wearing my teal and my white um, it happens to be one of my favorite colors even before it became my ribbon color but um, today we're wearing our teal I always, like you said I normally have a uh, teal lipstick on um, I didn't wear it today because it was a kind of a down day usually I don't really put on too much makeup until it's Sunday I'm getting ready to go to church um, but I definitely I yeah, decided to color my hair. That was something I said I wanted to do. I've, I'm a hairstylist, so I've had like almost every color in the book. I've never steered toward the blue and the green, but I got blue and green all together now with teal. Um, so this is, I did this last week uh, and, and I wanted to be able to wear it all month long, probably a little bit past the month because I really love the color. Everybody's telling me how great it looks on me, but um, I just want everybody to know um, about cervical cancer, about the cause, the effect, um, and how it can be prevented. And even on Sundays, what I've, what I've been doing on Sundays is wearing my lipstick. 
whether it's teal or not, and then I smear it purposely. And then people will want to come up to me and be like, hey, you got a little lipstick right there? And I'm like, no, leave my smear. A smear for a smear. Have you had your pap smear yet? And I do this Sundays after church. You know, it's really probably taboo to be doing that in Sunday, you know, Sunday before Sunday school or, you know, after Sunday service. But um, it's something that we definitely need to know about and we definitely need to be able to be proactive. Um, the Bible says that we are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And so we have to make sure that we not only are educating ourselves in the word, but educating ourselves with our health and those things around us that can um, affect us, you know, physically, because our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we want to make sure that we're doing everything possible to keep it um, perfect and keep it the way it's supposed to be. Um, I can't worship if I'm sick. I can't, you know, minister to other people um, and, 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 and come from a place of healing if I'm not healed myself. So we have to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. So what, thank you so much for that. That was, what do you, what are you saying to the women that not only just should we know about, about what you're, you're talking about, HPB, HPB? Yeah. HPV. HPV, as in victory. Yes. Okay, HPV. Um, and so what are, so in this month, are you suggesting that women uh, make sure that we get our pap smears and checked out by our doctors? Yes. So there are, there's more than one way that you can do this. Um, make sure you are seeing your doctor annually. My mistake was I assumed that a pap smear and a well woman's visit was the same, and it's not. You get a pap smear at your well woman's visit. Now there are new standards for pap smears. Um, so some women don't have to get them every year, but depending on your age, depending on your history will determine on how often you should get them. But then there's now an HPV test because HPV is something that can lie dormant. And so you can go in for a pap smear and have HPV in your system, but then you won't ever know it if it's not active at that time. But then it can decide, you know, three, four years later, it's going to pop up and be active. And now you have HP, you know, you have that to deal with. So what you want to do is make sure, talk to your doctor whenever you do make your well woman's um, exam visit. Talk to your doctor about doing an HPV test and a pap test. And so we are recommending women to do those together so that they can kind of cover all bases. All right. And you also mentioned that men can be affected by this too. So they should, they should see their doctor at least once a year and ask for this test as well. I'm not 100% sure on testing for men, but definitely everybody should see their doctor once a year to make sure that you're good and your health is okay. See it, fire catchers, chats. We talk about it all. Everything. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna, we're gonna wrap it up. I just want to pray for you. Um, actually, before I go, can you tell us the, the your prognosis of your of your diagnosis of the cancer? Yes, I actually just came back from my. Uh, I go to a well woman's visit now every year, every four months with my oncologist. So I just went last, um, let me see what's today. I just went last week on Wednesday and everything is good. They did a chest x-ray um, to make sure because cervical cancer tends to sometimes want to reoccur in the lungs, but my lungs look good. They're clear. They're normal. Um, my pap smear came back normal and everything is good. So I'm just going to continue going to see my doctor every four months, continue to be healthy and, um, the biggest thing, if we notice a change in any bit of change in our bodies, if I notice a change, I'm going to call my doctor and make sure that I'm good. But as of right now, I am good. I am 100% healed and whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you say, how much, how much would you say that your worship affected your, your, your healing? Well, I will say this. Um, I, being a part of support groups, um, and I've seen women talk about how long uh, before they were declared NED, um, I went in there with a the mindset that I was going to beat this and that I was going to win, and this was just a part of my story. Um, I worshiped every morning. I had a playlist that was called I Will Fight. I still play it to this day. It was nothing but songs of victory and healing. Um, I played it every day. I left it playing in my, I stayed with my cousin uh, while I was there. I left it playing in her apartment while I was gone. So when I came back from treatment, the, the, the atmosphere was already saturated with worship. Um, I went to bed with it. Um, I listened to it while I got treatment. And um, I didn't move around a whole lot as far as in dancing, just because of the physical effect that it had on my body, but I had a dance in my heart and in my spirit. And 29 days after starting treatment, so I got diagnosed um, January 11th. I started treatment February 6th. On March 7th, 
when they did my scan and that scan was really only to prepare for my next part of my treatment but that scan showed them that i had no evidence of disease and that the cancer um and the tumors were gone so i praise god for that and i know that that's only because of my worship and of my belief and and just knowing that god was going to do a miraculous healing in my body amen and you know what what you just said what you said at the beginning actually just ties in what you've just said worship is is who you are it's part of so whether you have um room to move and dance whether you have flags in your hand you are a worshiper so worship it, it all it all honors god it all is part of of our expression so let me just pray for you father i thank you that you have healed angel that you have just taken her into your bosom and wrapped your your healing arms around her that you have protected her that the enemy um had pl had a plan for her but your plan is greater that your plan is being realized that your plan for her is moving out in power that she steps out with more authority more power um and and just more awareness of who she is in christ that she is victorious that cancer is a thief cancer is a liar but you are truth and you are life and so she gladly gladly gives her life for for to worship you to lay herself at your feet um and that you are just you are sending her out to the world we didn't even get into that but you are sending her out to the world so give her more opportunities and for those that are watching that have uh health problems that have cancer or worry that we just stand with them as, yes. as sisters, and sisters in christ that 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 cancer is a thief but you are the healer and we proclaim that and we, and we worship you because that's who you are in Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.